So we joined um, Yuri Malinchiko, Sonny Williams, and Aki Hoside aboard, Sonny being the commander, for Expedition 33. And they were waiting for us with a whole task uh, list of things to do. Where there was a progress stocking, a dragon on board that needed to be packed up and sent away, and also um, we had an EVA. They were waiting for me to get on board so we could execute a US EVA again to look at the ammonia leak. Uh, the rollout, uh, the couple days prior uh, to launch of the Soyuz rocket, for those of you who have seen the shuttle launch, uh, Soyuz is about the size of a solid rocket booster. And uh, just a great package to develop uh, and to, well, to um, deploy a crew of three really up to the, to the International Space Station. We had great weather for launch. We did use a launch pad that was, uh, hadn't been used for about uh, 30 years, so that was kind of interesting, Lift but off. we still found our Lift way to the space station. Kevin Ford, Evgeny Tarokin, and Oleg Nowitzki as they head on a two-day trip to the International the Space Station. Comfortable. It was military hip hippo. This is river. Uh, new. It's very big river. On ISS, uh, Sunny, Aki, and Yuri was waiting our crew, and uh, our docking was comfortable too. About uh, uh, maybe two weeks after arrival, we did uh, the EVA, um, I think maybe 10 days. Uh, there was a leak, uh, ammonia leak on an outboard uh, radiator, uh, solar array system that uh, needed repair. And uh, Sunny Naki went out and did some, uh, some swap arounds. Great and handover, and I'm ready to assume command of the International Space Station. You Thank you it. very much. <laughs> In that time, too, we did uh, handover, and it was uh, just, just a really busy time uh, getting them on. And then uh, up comes uh, the crew of Expedition 3435. Okay, this is uh, our crew, so I use uh, TMA-07, and this is one of the Russian tradition, uh, a blessing with uh, holy water. And the last photos for before lunch and this is takeoff of the Soyuz uh, the weather was fine and uh, this is the middle of the May uh, and May and last year and December seconds we can see yeah you can see separation of the stages and the fuel tanks a view inside the capsule uh, this is a uh, very uh, very interesting and active and dynamic moment and um, uh, docking with the station view from the SM module um, you know that this is very important to make this because it's a um, very the station. Yeah, party time. You guys on orbit, uh, as your patch says, off the earth, for the um, earth. What a great slogan. You guys do great things as for usual, us uh, here uh, on the earth. Fresh crew and, uh, is sitting we'll behind, think about you uh, every day up there in space, enjoying on. the space station. Take care. Well, looks good, you see. 
So right away, life begins on the space station with research and maintenance. This big beast, um, uh, Kevin and I are pushing through the module. There's the carbon dioxide removal assembly, one of the more ambitious maintenance tasks we had on board. Uh, but all day long, uh, six and a half, uh, seven, eight hours a day, we are living and working in our laboratory. Life sciences, uh, fluid dynamics. Uh, this is a, a furnace. There's actually a furnace on board the station where we can do uh, combustion experiments. Had the opportunity to do some medical experiments as well. This is uh, an ultrasound machine. You might recognize it. That is my hand. Uh, I'm holding a cup of water in my hand, and that is uh, all you need to get the ultrasound. We haven't quite worked out all of the problems associated with medical care, for even injecting uh, a syringe of medication and getting the medication into the syringe can be difficult. The, uh, there's no air fluid separation. And so uh, myself and some crewmates uh, try to work through some techniques of how to give uh, medications IV. This is a photograph of the first uh, ultrasound of the spinal cord, which had not been uh, considered before, but now we do it in space and maybe doing it on the ground as well for medical care. A lot of maintenance tasks, rotating racks, the uh, ground team's ability to coordinate all this uh, with all the obstruction that, that could occur. It's an amazing thing. It's like a big explosion that ends up with an all clear thing today. No narration required. So, uh, yeah, and between the Russian segment and the U.S. segment, uh, 220 different experiments, roughly, in the time we were up there. This is a, a pump to pump up the tanks. No, this is not true. That's actually a uh, weight scale. It measures the frequency of oscillations, and it can tell you your mass in kilograms to the nearest tenth of a kilogram. Very, uh, very, very precise. Uh, slept close together, but not that close together. But uh, the bunks are all right there in Node 2, and uh, very comfortable accommodations. Once in a while, something gets away from you, flies off. This is actually one of our uh, kind of almost weekly rituals of collecting urine and putting them in tubes and freezing them in the uh, Melfi, the minus 80 lab freezer. And it's really about minus 95 in that section, so uh, very cold. Uh, we're supposed to do this promptly uh, all in less than about 60 seconds, and I think that time took me 65, so I lost some points on that one. Uh, this guy right there is a free-flying satellite with eyes. That's Spheres. Uh, it's the newest uh, iteration. The satellite in the foreground here on the left is actually looking at this other satellite. Both of them are flying using uh, carbon dioxide jets as a propellant. And uh, the logic and everything is built right into the brains of the satellite. They're about the size of bowling balls. But it's really cool to watch them fly. And uh, my dream would be someday to have an EVA version to perhaps go out and look for uh, the source of flakes of ammonia maybe coming out of the space, and space station somewhere so you could pin it down. We also had an aquarium on board with the Madaka fish. Uh, these were um, fish that have bones like mammals. So it's a great osteoporosis study. It ran in the Kibo module and we took 32 fish up with us on uh, Soyuz TMA-06M and uh, there's uh, some thought that perhaps someday uh, we could find a cure for osteoporosis which would be a big, big thing for all mankind. One of Chris's uh, beautiful demonstrations of how things are just different up there, wringing water out of a washcloth, and uh, very entertaining. Many of the things uh, we do on board, um, Chris, was, uh, Chris and Tom took to putting the videotape to them and getting them down. Uh, capillary flow is looking at bubbles and tanks and pumps. On board, of course, in a fuel tank, you really want the fuel to be at the outlet and not bubbles at the outlet. So. Uh, they're looking at the way to control where the bubbles are in tanks and stuff like that. You can see this bubble falling off the step there. And uh, at some, someday, maybe uh, they won't have bubbles in syringes when they give shots and that sort of thing. We'll figure out how to control all the, that in fluids. The zero-gravity environment is a great place to do it. This is an educational demonstration. Uh, school kids think up how, what speeds they want to spin those things at, exactly what they want to demonstrate. And we just do it on board for them so they can see. And uh, two cans, one with a liquid inside, one with a solid, and very different attitude dynamics, a little bit more 
or advanced uh, attitude dynamics thoughts. How do you eat in space? This is filling up, uh, I think it's scrambled eggs. Sometimes it's hard to tell when you first grab the package, but uh, squirt, squirt some water in and mix it up and let it sit for a few minutes and, and instant scrambled eggs. Tom's filling up, I think, uh, drinking water here, but uh, it's sort of a visual that up is completely relative uh, when you're on board the space station. It's, it's arbitrary, and you come into a module and people are pointed all different directions, uh, and you get used to that after a while. Uh, when Tom threw this next one, we laughed for about a m minute. <laughs> 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 Playing with water is is a constant after dinner entertainment. You put a little stuff in the water to make it colorful. Use dental floss to float it around. Play with your food. Visiting vehicles bring up fresh food, which when you're living out of pouches for months at a time, it's very nice to get uh, tomatoes or or grapes or. Uh, or uh, peppers or something. It's just a, a real treat. If you're eating uh, cashew nuts, they, they float out of the can, but if you spin around, centrifugal force will pretty much hold them in the can for you. A Dragon spaceship brought some of that fresh fruit up, and this is a sped up version of the controllers here on the ground. After Kevin reached out and grabbed it, the controllers carefully bringing it up uh, inch by inch with the uh, with the cannon arm too and installing it bringing us uh, supplies and clean clothes and fresh food and new experiments and then at the end of it undocking it and sending it home to have it survive and land back in the atmosphere we operate the arm from the cupola but the cupola is really our window to the world and uh, you have to keep rubbing the nose prints off the glass in there because it is the favorite place to be an astronaut. The views, uh, uh, like the Bahamas here, that's Andros Island, they just constantly uh, mesmerize you and take your breath away. To be able to see an entire mountain range uh, uh, just at, at a glance, to be able to see the whole Nile River from the source all the way to the Mediterranean at one glance, or. It's just such a, a constant, uh, like the Earth is showing you its secrets perpetually from space. It's uh, We do our very best to take pictures of volcanoes as they erupt and, and the glint off the water and watch the world go by. We even set up one of the cameras. Kevin did a lot of this on a time lapse so you could get a feel for what it looks like as the world roars by in all of its color and texture. It doesn't actually go that fast, but it still goes five miles a second. And uh, it's really cool. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. With, uh, with great humility and pleasure, I accept command of the International Space Station. Thank you, sir. There you go. Good and uh, as Kevin and Oleg and Yevgeny headed home, it started um, our expedition, Expedition 35. Uh, the next crew came up uh, after these guys left, so um, there was about a two-week period in between, and I'll pass the mic down for landing. Okay, well, I'll just tell the story. I did get to do a uh, shuttle entry. A uh, shuttle entry, you get about a G and a half maximum, and uh, it's a very, very pretty smooth glide home with uh, good windows. No, If you have an explosion during that entry, it's only the gear coming down uh, 15 seconds before landing. But... The Soyuz entry is really filled with a, a lot of really exciting moments. Uh, the, the modules blowing apart and the parachute opening, uh, the high G's on entry and uh, the landing on the ground are all very, very big events in your life. So that's why we have such smiles uh, on our faces as we get out. For our landing, it was pretty cold and foggy. They had a hard time finding us, uh, so when they did, we were even uh, that much happier. We could have sat out there in the cool air all day. Uh, we just really enjoyed being back on Earth. They even brought a little uh, grass out there for us. And here's the rendezvous of uh, Chris Casty's crew. It's, uh, Chris is wearing something special as he arrives inboard the space station. We'll show you better in a second. 
it's it's a moment we really look forward to welcoming new crew to space, especially Sasha Mazurkin here, a, a rookie. And that Chris looks good in a mustache, I think. This uh, was Expedition 35 with uh, a whole suite of experiments. A uh, large part of it was packing up Dragon. This bag may weigh a couple hundred pounds, but uh, you could just float it around like it's a balloon. And uh, we spent weeks um, getting things ready, making sure we had everything right, and then piece by piece getting Dragon ready to send home. Roman and Pavel went out to do a spacewalk. Uh, a lot of maintenance work on the outside, getting things ready for the Russian laboratory that's coming, as well as retrieving experiments that were on the outside, Roman's first spacewalk. I sang a song with just under a million people simultaneously from space, 600,000 students all across Canada and almost a million people around the world simultaneously singing a song that's called ISS. It's a pretty uh, magic moment in my life. Robinat um, can be controlled by a, a body suit like Tom was wearing there and by mimicking Tom's motions. Robinat is, is really learning how to handle human interfaces on board way. a space station. Tom in the taper, move it that way. The station is leaving me behind. See you later. <laughs> we ran all sorts of experiments on board. Um, uh, and this is Chris Cassidy exercising. We have three different types of exercise equipment. But one day, Pavel came to my room and said that he saw fireworks coming out of the space station. And that's what our ammonia leak looked like. And with uh, incredible confidence and speed, Houston decided that uh, Chris Cassidy and Tom Marshburn would go outside after just one day's warning and go do a spacewalk to try and fix it. This experience would, the uh, only way I can relate it on the ground is if you, uh, tomorrow you woke up and found out it was Christmas all of a sudden and you had no idea that it was coming up. Uh, we were very excited and pleased, obviously, that the ground had uh, trusted us to do this. Chris is on the right, I'm on the left. Uh, Hatfield and uh, Pavel Vinogradov got us suited up to go outside. And even though it was quick and it appeared to be easy, uh, the ground uh, put together an, an incredible series of procedures and looked over our shoulders the entire time to keep us safe because uh, spacewalks continue to be one of the most dangerous things that we do in space. But fortunately, it looks like the repair that we did is continuing to hold, uh, but they're continuing to look at the data. Uh, five and a half hour EVA, and right after this uh, spacewalk was completed, uh, within 48 hours, we were climbing into our Soyuz to come home. So the last four days of our mission were a complete surprise and uh, some of the most exciting of our lives. I pass command of the International Space Station to uh, Pavel Vladimirovich Vinogradov. Congratulations. Thank you. And the um, uh, mission is completed and we are ready to go home. Uh, we are putting our suits on and uh, go inside the Soyuz. Like that, because <laughs> five miles we uh, were not there and uh, been ready for the landing, and now we are ready to close the hatch. After that, uh, checking the leak between uh, vehicles, uh, undocking, and the last the the last stage of our flight, of our mission. This is a, a very fast. Uh, uh, and uh, very dynamic uh, moment of light parachuting and landing. Uh, a lot of people are waiting for us on the uh, landing uh, side, opening the same hatch. Uh, we, are, uh, we are waiting for maybe uh, for to talk with friends, with uh, colleagues, with specialists, and uh, rescue team and medical guys uh, control our uh, our 
cells. <laughs> okay, and it's time to go home to Houston and to Star City, of course. Thank you.